All right, I'm gonna get into Utah and Florida here in a minute and do a whole uh, recap and instant reaction. But right now, it is fourth down and ten for Minnesota at uh, Nebraska's goal line. They're down seven. It is ten to three. What a defensive battle it has been all day, even for Utah and Florida. We'll go over that all the three and out. Here we go. Can Minnesota complete this fourth and ten or get a touchdown to tie this game? There's two minutes and 38 seconds left. Kelly Kamanis throws it. And again, the guy was out of bounds. <laughs> They're saying he was in. <laughs> They're saying he was in. Are you kidding me? I thought his toe was out of bounds. Oh, look at that. Right there at the end, he did tap his toe. Yeah. <laughs> Touchdown, Minnesota. So this game is probably going to overtime. So let me talk about Florida uh, pissing the bed <laughs> at Utah. Uh, Utah looked really good, but how good is Florida? <laughs> Same thing with Navy, Notre Dame, right? Uh how good is the opponent that they just beat? Uh, Florida has the talent. They have the bodies, and Utah just ran over them. Man, this is exciting. They're an extra point away from tying it up. 10-10. to 10. Okay. In the first quarter, Florida, the first drive, three. They had a third and one, and it was a false start. It was a three and out for Florida. The crowd was rocking for Utah. Uh, Utah had a, uh, on their first play, offensively, they had a 70-yard passing touchdown by Bryson Barnes, who started at quarterback instead of uh, Cam Rising. Touchdown is confirmed for Minnesota. Okay, back to uh, Utah. And the fact that they had two quarterbacks play that wasn't Cam Rising, and they ate Florida's defense alive. Uh, Barnes had a 70-yard pass to Money Parks on their first offensive possession. The next Florida possession, they were three and out again. Great uh, punt coverage, though, by them, and it forced Utah in bad field position. That was a thing that Florida was trying to do early, and it was kind of effective. Uh, full start by uh, Utah. Put their ball, the ball at their own seven-yard line. Another false, false start and a 10 a third and ten was converted by Barnes to Yasmin. Uh, so, and then a 17-yard pass to uh, Suganagraga, and then they failed on a third and three, and they had to punt the ball away. There's a flag on the kick for Minnesota. Let's see what this is all about. They're deliberating. Florida then had a, Marcus Burke had a 37-yard catch. Reverses, there was a couple of reverse runs for big gains for Florida at this point. Uh, Mertz then was sacked, though, for his first time for eight yards. Florida was forced to make a 32-yard field goal. It was 7-3 Utah early in the first quarter, late in the first quarter. With, 20, with two minutes and 27 seconds left in the first quarter, there is only 20 rushing yards total by each team. Uh, sacks are included in that. That's just insane. I think this game dragged on because they just passed, passed, passed. There was no running involved. Uh, Utah then had a three and out because of a pass interference that was not called on third down. I thought Florida uh, pass interfered on that play. But Burke for Florida then had a 20 Four-yard catch, Odin had an 18-yard catch, and finally the second quarter came to an end. <laughs> Florida was at Utah's 18-yard line, and then they had a delay a game <laughs> to open the second quarter on third down. It was third and 12, and then they had a fumble, so it was fourth and one, and then they had a false start. Again, Florida shooting themselves in the foot. <laughs> Missed field goal now. It was still 7-3 to Utah. What a sequence of events this is because listen to what Utah did. Uh, Nate Johnson came in and kept for a first down. 
of the backup court, the backup backup quarterback, third string. Another first down on the ground from uh, Utah, and Johnson then fumbled the snap. It was third and twelve at that point, and they I thought maybe fake punt. No, instead Florida had two number threes on the field at the same time. It was fourth and four, fourth and three, or something. So that was a penalty that gave Utah an automatic first down on fourth down. Um, <laughs> come on, Florida. So that was the first down for Utah. Barnes came back in at that point, got 15 yards passing, and and then Johnson came in on the next play. <laughs> at this point, I was like, I would roll with Barnes, okay? But I was proven wrong because Johnson then had a 27-yard rushing touchdown. So it was just a weird sequence. 14-3 to three, Utah at that point with 7.47 left. ETN had two runs for a first down, and then Mertz got sacked by Bishop this time. The first sack was Ellis, uh, previously uh, versus Mertz, and they had to punt. A bad punt leads to Utah starting at Florida's 46-yard line. It's like a 26-yard punt by Florida. Another mistake. Bernard had a first down run. Uh, a backwards double pass was wide open for Utah, but it was overthrown. Pittman dropped uh, an open pass across the middle. He he turned his head before he looked it in. He would have got the first down. But uh, Utah made the field goal 17-3. to With 2.46 left, Mertz got sacked again when Florida took over. <laughs> uh, it was Tamavasa this time. It was third and 19, and uh, Florida was 0-5 on third down at this point. They went 3-0. and out. They went 0-6. Right. With one minute and three seconds left, Utah went on attack mode, but uh, had to punt eventually. It was the end of the half for the game, 17-3 Utah. In the third quarter, Utah got the ball first. It was a 3-0, and out, but a great punt. Uh... <laughs> Inside Florida's 10-yard line. I think it was inside the 5-yard line. Florida intercepted at their own. Or Florida was intercepted upon at their own 11-yard uh, line. And Bryson Barnes eventually had a 5-yard touchdown uh, run. It was 24-3 Utah. Great drive going for Florida after that. But uh, an illegal formation on third down in Utah. Uh, at the Utah's 12-yard line. Florida tried a flip-ahead pass, you know, one of them shovel passes, and it failed. So Utah got the ball, but then they went three and out. A lot of three and outs. Great defense, like I said. Uh, great punt, though, <laughs> to Florida's 31-yard line from their own end zone. Uh, Florida then had a four and out. They got a, a first. Uh, no, they failed on fourth down. They went for it, four and out. Utah got the ball at Florida's 43-yard line, but then they went three and out. So back and forth, here we go. It's it's interesting uh, of a game. But they put Florida at their own three-yard line, and Florida held on the punt return, so they started at their own one-and-a-half-yard line. Odin and Florida finally got a big play in the passing game. Mertz got, I mean, he, I'll tell you, uh, I think he had over 300 passing yards, but they were sneaky. They were they were hollow. They were hollow passing yards. They didn't matter. Okay, so what happened here? Minnesota got an interception off Nebraska with under a minute left, 58 seconds left. <laughs> what a game that is, too. Uh, anyway... Trey Wilson had a nice run for Florida, yeah, but and then they had a legal formation right after that. Just kept shooting themselves in the foot. It could have been a close game. It ended up, ended up uh, what, uh, 24 to 11, something like that. Uh, pass was complete after. Then they had a fourth and two pass that was complete after review. I thought it was a turnover on downs. That ball, aid, the ground aided the ball for that. 
Uh, but whatever. Uh, Florida lost after it was seven and nothing. Douglas then had a great touchdown catch for 19 yards. It was a 98-yard drive for Florida, and the two-point conversion was good. So 24 to 11. Like I said, there was nine minutes and 22 seconds still left in the game. At this point, I was thinking Utah has to get some first downs and take that clock. They might. They have the, had their own three and outs all game. So get some first downs. Uh, Florida and your punter has gifted you until this point in the game. Close out the game. Utah did drive the ball and ease some clock after that, but they missed the field goal at the end of the drive. But the game was over, like I said, after that 70-yard touchdown. <laughs> that made it 7 nothing. Uh, but the game could have been different if Florida wasn't just beating themselves all game. We'll see what Napier can do with that team going forward. Florida is not the type of team that can fight from behind, in my opinion, though, especially with the new running clock uh, rule, where uh, unless it's under two minutes, the clock just keeps running no matter what, uh, except for setting the chains, which is kind of subjective. And by you know, how fast can the chain gang set them chains, or are they slow? It's interesting. Kyle Whittingham is awesome, though, at, at Utah. And Utah has three viable quarterbacks now that they can just interchange. Cam Rising, once he comes back, he'll be number one, of course. But I love uh, Utah and that, and that program that they have built. Sorry, I'm watching Nebraska, Minnesota. It is 10 to 10 right now. There's 37 seconds left in the game. It is third and eight. Minnesota is at Nebraska's 27-yard line. And they had a false start. Or was the offensive line baited? They're discussing. Or was there a timeout? It was a false start, he says. So that makes third and 13 with 20. Oh, 10 second runoff, unless they decide to use their timeout, Minnesota. So 17 seconds left. They have one timeout because they didn't use it there on the runoff. It's third and 12. Third and 13, I mean. And they do a draw play. And he almost got there. The clock's running. They got to call a timeout. A field goal wins this game for Minnesota, who I had winning this game. We'll see if this goes to overtime. I'll stay on with you guys. Five seconds left. It's going to be a chip shot of a field goal. Can Minnesota win? I had Utah winning. I had Minnesota winning. I had uh, uh, the other last week. Notre Dame, of course, and USC. All the Power 5 teams that I've picked can win if Minnesota does right here so far. What a big 10. And this is a game that Michigan, I'm a Michigan fan. Michigan plays both of these teams. So uh, they're beating the hell out of each other. Great defenses, not so great offenses. Uh... P.J. Fleck said, uh, Cal Kamanis is probably an NFL quarterback. First one in a while for Minnesota. He's had a good game. I haven't looked at the stats, but I've been flipping back and forth from the Utah, Florida, and this game. Here we go. The field goal. Oh, it's a left-footed uh, kicker for Minnesota. And Nebraska is going to use their last time out to ice the kicker, of course. So I'm sorry. Thank you for staying with me this long. If you're still here, like the video. Share with others uh, what I do here. Yeah, share my videos. 
I'm not on any other social media. This is just this is a hobby of mine. Subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> what a game. What a weekend of college football. Last week, and then even though there were blowouts, now we finally have, <laughs> could go to overtime if they miss this field goal, and I'm not going to stay with you that long. Uh, but it's only Thursday night. We got football tomorrow. We got football on Saturday, of course, Sunday, and Monday this week. Here it is, 47-yard attempt. I said a chip shot. That's a little funny. It's in. Minnesota. Minnesota beats Nebraska at home on a last-second field goal try. So there you go. A couple of recaps and one video. Florida, <laughs> you better get your act together. You're in the SEC. Utah. Great performance versus SEC talent. Minnesota survives uh, versus Nebraska. Both of you better watch out for Michigan. <laughs> so there you have it. Thank you, everybody, and have a great night.